right? Don't use that argument. But what does God say here in verse number four? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to, to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So God said, don't, you know, don't make any image. Don't fashion anything. All right. Don't fashion anything. Don't take anything out. Don't deck it with gold or silver. Don't do any of those things. Right. Don't do all that to worship me. Why? Because the Godhead can't be worshiped like that. Amen. God said not to worship him after that. Right. He can't be fat. You can't make an image of God. You can't make something to worship God with. All right. God said, you know, you call unto me and I will answer thee. Right? Worship him in spirit and in truth. Right. So, so God laid that down as a foundation in the scriptures long ago. I mean, you know, I don't know that anybody could really argue with that point. I mean, I guess they could try. Anybody that claims to be saved, though, should really argue with that. However, you're often told, though, that, well, Jeremiah is the only place that that's talked about. So, I mean, come on, don't you have any more? I mean, really? You think that's what he was really talking about? Well, yes, I do. Because, by the way, we're going to get to those verses, but it says the way of the heathen says the way learn not the way of the heathen didn't even say that you were heathens did it in fact he's talking to his people and he's telling them don't learn the way of the heathen don't follow their ways don't try to worship me like the heathen worship don't try to do that i won't accept that now let's look at this okay so people will tell you well no you know trees you know whatever why do you make such a big deal about a tree well god made a very big deal about trees actually so turn to Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse number 2, and we find here, You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods. Well, where did they serve their gods? What did they use to serve their gods with? Upon the high mountains. So those are the high places, right? Upon the hills, right? And under what? Every green tree. Uh-oh. Every green tree. That's right. God said, if you see them doing that, you destroy that tree. You don't follow their ways. You burn it down, man. You cut it down. You destroy it. You don't have anything to do with that. But let's say you didn't destroy the tree. Let's look at it this way. You weren't supposed to worship under every green tree the way they did. You weren't supposed to use the tree in that way. By the way, I'm going to show you 14 instances in the, in the King James Bible uh, of, of green trees that were used for worship. By the way, did you know that in these 14 instances, which is the only time that word green tree is used, right? Every time it's condemned. It's a condemning thing. Every time God's against it. Every single time God is against it. God doesn't like it. God says, no, that's, the, that's what they did with their gods. I'm not like their gods. 1 Kings chapter 14, verse number 23. Oh, by the way, while you're turning there, uh, John Gill had this to say, he said, which being shady and solitary and pleasant to the sight, they fancied their gods delighted in it. And this notion prevailed among other nations. And there is scarcely, listen, any deity but what had some tree or another devoted to it. As the oak to Jupiter, the laurel to Apollo, the ivy to Bacchus, the olive to Minerva, the myrtle to Venus. They all had a deity attached to trees. A tree attached to a deity. All of them had one. All the false gods had that. Yeah, it'd be perfect, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. I know. And the star of Remphan, your god, and this, and, and then you have the others. Yeah, I mean, it's just perfect, isn't it? Isn't that unfortunate? Anyway, the first, yeah, first, first Kings chapter 14, verse number 23. For they also built them high places. Here we go. This, are you seeing how this is all pagan, false god worship? Look at this. For they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree. There you go again. Worship with the tree. I've heard Baptist preachers, I mean, hardcore Baptist evangelists, right? And they will tell me, well, I enjoy my tree. I enjoy my tree. I was like, no, seriously. I mean, in every other area, you would think that they were completely... So I'm not kidding you. Fire breathing, pre everything. I mean, but and then it's like, well, I, 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 bring, I enjoy... I asked them about that. This is before I even studied anything out. I asked them because they, the, they were the hardest preachers I knew. And I was like, 
Oh, brother, what, what do you think about the Christmas tree? Well, I enjoy my tree. Yeah, there are also sodomites. Right, occult worship, green trees, swatomites, like uh, my friend says here. Swatomites. There are also swatomites there. In there. I'm sorry, he did it the other day. Smoking, stop smoking your pot. <laughs> Gets up there and he's preaching. Stop smoking your pot. Your beer. Knock it off. Anyway, sorry. Uh, no, I'm not really. Second Kings chapter 16, verse number four. And we could, by the way, we could do more of a study around all these verses. But these are all occult practices. This is why God destroyed the lands. He destroyed them. He told them, "Burn it all. Get rid of it all. Why? It's defiled." Second Kings chapter 16, verse number four. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the high hills and under every green tree. There you go. Height of idolatry right there. Trying to take a Christmas tree. By the way, it's even worse because it is an evergreen. If you understand what, and I'm going to get into that, what evergreen trees mean to pagans. I'm, going to, I'm not even going to use my own words. I'm going to use the words of somebody, some other people to show you this, okay? But we're going to start, obviously, with our authority of the Word of God. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse number 10. And they set them up images. This doesn't sound good already, does it? What did God say about graven? I mean, don't. Don't leave the graven images out. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. It's not looking good for the Christmas side, is it, for the Christmas tree? Not looking good for it at all, is it? All right, Second Chronicles chapter 28, verse number 4. Let's see if we can get any better news here for them. I don't think so. I don't think it's, it's going to happen. I'm starting to see a pattern here. All right? Second Chronicles chapter 28, verse number 4. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the high hills under every green tree. Well, we just heard that, didn't we? Very similar. That's right. How about Isaiah chapter 57, verse number 5? Let's turn there. Maybe Isaiah will give you some better news for that, for that side. I don't think so, though. Those mean old prophets back there. What they mean? They didn't have the Christmas spirit. No, they did not have the Christmas spirit. That's right. By the way, verse number four says, Against whom do you sport yourselves? Against whom make you a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? That's another verse altogether to tackle. Are you not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Krampus draws out the tongue. So does Miley Cyrus, but that's, you know. Inflaming, yourself with, uh, inflaming yourselves with idols. Look at this. Under every green tree. And flaming yourselves. Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Listen, on a side note, before I forget this, I, I was just reading the history of the Waldenses yesterday. I'm telling you, last night it was making me cry like a baby. I was, I was, reading, I was reading this and what they did. Those popes, what they did. I'm going to read it to you sometime. You need to hear it. You need to understand why men arose and called him the prince of Sodom and the reason why they did what they did. You need to understand. You need to know the history. Because it's very sad today that people want to identify with this garbage, this Christmas tree and all this Roman Catholic Babylonian worship garbage and not separate it and call it out and nail Rome for what it is. Amen. Rome has not changed. But look at the inflame. It says inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. Anyway, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse number 20. Oh, there's that verse. There's Jeremiah. Jeremiah talked about trees too. He said, For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress. When upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest playing the harlot. He's telling Israel, he said, man, you're worshiping all these idols. You are playing the harlot. You are committing spiritual idolatry and adultery against me because you have turned your back on me and turned to the way of the heathen and the worship of the heathen. Amen. The Lord said also, oh, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse number 6. Go ahead. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine. Yep. 
thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine. That's right. And by the way, I'm going to talk about the difference between vines and trees in a little while in this sermon. So that's, that's going to come up too. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse number 6. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? Wait a minute, so it's backsliding? Okay, what is backsliding? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. Harlot worship. That's what Christmas trees are. They're harlot worship. Say it plain, amen? That's what it is. It's the Bible. It's the Word of God. That's what God said, amen? It's harlot worship. Thank you. 